This morning I was looking through my suggested videos on YouTube but without much success so I opened up my subscription feed to find a video from Rich at Review Tech USA detailing how two of his videos relating to the Angry Joe incident and the accusations against him had been flagged as not suitable for all advertisers. It seems these videos were flagged manually by people who didn't like the content of them. This is how Rich presents it. I um, woke up to having both Joe videos be limited ads. And I'm like, okay, I'll just go and get them reviewed and they'll go back to being green. And then I see by manual review. And you know what that means is that the video probably got flagged by a bunch of people, whether it be in Joe's camp because I didn't defend him or the other person's camp because I didn't defend her. And I said that we should have an investigation done and see what the outcome is. God forbid I have a, a level head, I have a level headed approach that's logical and makes sense. So Rich presents a balanced argument in which he suggests that allegations should be investigated and someone, or a group of people, go after him and try to get his videos taken down as a result. And as Rich says, this could be coming from the Angry Joe camp or from those who support the woman making the accusations. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter where this is coming from, because the motivation behind this doesn't have anything at all to do with what is true, but everything to do with which camp you happen to be in. And that, in a nutshell, is everything that's wrong with social media and the internet. People really aren't interested in the facts or evidence. They're interested in promoting their own agenda. Who cares if the facts support them or not? Just think about that for a moment. Rich makes a video which is basically saying, let's wait for all the evidence before we come to a conclusion. And the internet responds by treating him like a pariah. They may as well have been pointing their fingers and screaming, UNBELIEVER! How dare he want facts? How dare he try to navigate through the mire of claim and counterclaim? How dare he be uncertain? Because that's the crime here. Rich isn't embracing one side or the other. He's trying to be balanced, and that is the biggest sin of all on the internet. A few years ago, I reposted something about Donald Trump on Facebook, and, and it was extremely critical of him. The problem, though, was that it was untrue. A friend of mine pointed this out to me, and I responded by thanking him for setting me straight. I also left the post up with the comment thread so that people could see that I'd been wrong. For me, that was the right thing to do. I was wrong. I should admit it. You know, there was no two ways about that. And to refuse to accept that just wasn't rational. But, you know, that's the problem here. People don't want to act rationally. And as an aside, I still can't stand Donald Trump and I believe he suffers from narcissistic personality disorder. But I am a little bit more careful about what I share, not just about Donald Trump, but about everything. And look, you know, I'm sure I'll be wrong again in the future. And if I do, I'm hoping I'll follow the same procedure and do the same thing and hold my hands up. I do wonder, though, how many people would have done what I did. You know, I see it all the time online. Someone posts something that's complete bollocks. But when that fact's pointed out to them, instead of taking it down or making it clear they were wrong, they double down and they often attack the person who pointed out the mistake. Talk about killing the messenger. I touched on this a little in my video about Brexit and the sunk cost fallacy, and Brexit, like Trump, are extreme examples of how this polarisation of opinion has become more prevalent. We see it with feminism, Black Lives Matter, and any number of other issues too. We can't allow discussion, only orthodoxy, and if someone says something that doesn't fit with your worldview, you have to attack them. Feminists are all nutters, or from the other side, anyone who disagrees with any feminist argument is a misogynist. Black Lives Matter is an anarchist organisation that wants to topple civilization as we know it. Or again, on the other side, all police are racists and if you disagree, you're part of the problem. Never mind that there are reasons for opposing all of these arguments. If you do, you're evil depending on which side of the argument the other person's on. And you need to be brought down. 
and damn the evidence. And when the accusations start to fly, it gets even more toxic. For some people, anyone accused of certain crimes is guilty just because they've been accused. To others, every accusation is false and those people making such claims should be forever pariahs. But neither has any basis in reality because these issues are difficult and each case is different and should be looked at on its own merits. But it's getting increasingly difficult for that to happen and that's the root of this problem. Sam Harris has said that he thinks social media is driving us all mad and I agree with him. We've all been funneled more and more into echo chambers that only encourage us to ignore uncomfortable questions and to ignore and despise anyone who asks them. Never mind that we should be asking these questions and should be entering into dialogue with those who have different viewpoints. It doesn't matter which side of the fence you're on, the same mindset applies. Agree good, disagree bad. And don't you dare express uncertainty. That's the worst crime of all. In this climate, saying, I don't know, or I don't have all the facts, makes you complicit. You're the enemy because you won't buy the Kool-Aid or buy into the orthodoxy. Pick a side, goddamn you, and stop trying to be reasonable. But reasonable is what we should be all striving for. Because without reason, everything falls apart. There's a quote from George Orwell's 1984, and I think it's pertinent here. It goes like this. How do we know that two and two make four, or that the force of gravity works, or that the past is unchangeable? If both the past and the external world exist only in the mind, and if the mind itself is controllable, what then? Yes, what then? What happens if we ditch reason for belief, open-minded inquiry, for orthodoxy? Well, I'll tell you, ultimately, if we don't stop it, we end up with totalitarianism of one form or another. It matters not one jot whether that totalitarianism comes from the right or from the left, because ultimately, ultimately it's the same thing. We need to take a step back we need to look at what we're saying as well as what other people are saying and judge ourselves and make sure we're sticking to facts. Try to be honest with ourselves and with other people. And if we're wrong, hold our bloody hands up and say so. Not only is it the honourable thing to do, not doing that is just cowardice. Be honest Argue honestly. Stop trying to pull the wool over other people's eyes. And things will start to get better. And whatever you do, do have conversations with other people and with people who disagree with you. Another quote from Sam Harris, and it goes something like this. Civilization progresses through a series of successful conversations. And those conversations have to be with people you disagree with, and you have to find common ground. We need, on the internet and elsewhere, to try and find common ground. Try and look at the evidence. And look, you know, there are plenty of things we can disagree on, but sometimes it's really important that we listen to what other people say and we try and come to some sort of consensus between us all. Because if we don't, well, we're all lost. We've had it. And I know this all started with me talking about a, a video by Review Tech USA, but this is a much bigger issue. It's not just about YouTube. It's not just about Twitter. It's about the world in general and the future we want. And the future I want is a future where we have conversations with people and we move forward and we advance civilization. And I don't know what you want, but if you don't want that, I don't understand you. Seriously, I don't. Anyway, that's me done. I'm going to go and grab myself a, <laughs> a cold drink because it's bloody hot. And I'll speak to you in the next one. Bye.